<clears throat> All right, welcome everybody to Full Circle. After about an hour worth of technical difficulties that mostly ended up being my fault. <clears throat> uh, I'm your host, Chad, as always. Uh, Cheddar Caveman on everything. And we'll talk a little bit about Circle. I think I'm going to do a bit of an abbreviated episode this time because uh, it ended up being a little later than I was hoping to record. Um, I may try to get another episode in sometime Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, maybe between now and next Wednesday, as my schedule allows. <clears throat> uh, so real quick, just uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit of news, and then we'll talk about a couple model entries, and, and we'll call it a night. Um, this week, um, yesterday, I believe at this point, Privateer Press posted an insider uh, by Will Schick talking about what to look forward to in the errata that will be coming out in January of next year, uh, of, officially before SmogCon, which uh, sounds to be Privateer's first con of the year now, um, giving them an international presence and, and so forth. So, uh, But real quick, Will Schick talked about a few things that they're going to be looking at. <clears throat> I don't know if these were in any particular order. They weren't necessarily... They didn't necessarily indicate, but uh, first thing is they're going to be looking at the way throws are being abused at the moment. So uh, we haven't talked about it really because it's mostly been in minions, but there are a few things Circle could do. Right now, the fact that you don't deviate when you throw and um, when you throw directly away or when you throw at a target out of range has been pretty abused by uh, mostly minions to get some pretty ridiculous threat ranges somewhere in the 20 plus range um, obviously not really what they intended there so i don't know what change we'll be seeing there but they're looking at that uh, they're looking at Crix's ability to handle uh, shooting armies again not something that applies directly to circle but <clears throat> good to know um, I don't know what their intent there is either. Be interesting to see what happens. The they're planning to begin some pretty significant changes to scorn from the sound of things, and they said the whole faction. So uh, there's been a lot of negativity out there, to say the least, about scorn, scorn state in the competitive game, and and how their pieces stack up against everything else. So uh, this is a good bit of news. I I certainly like to see uh, more scorn on the table. I think they're a really neat army and privateer obviously would like to sell more scorn to you. So um, good all around. And then they, they talked about uh, the only part that may end up being really relevant to us is that they're going to be looking at the top and bottom 5% of, or they're going to be looking at the 5% of underperforming and overperforming models to see if they need anything changed. Uh, likely going to hit a few circle things, uh, notably, I would expect there will be at least some change to Wormwood and Cassius. They were, we talked about them in the previous episode, but they were pretty strong at the WTC. They've been pretty strong in tournaments. They seem to be pretty frustrating for a lot of people to play into, which we, we went into depth. Uh, I expect we'll see some change there. Century Stone of Mannequin is probably the other one that's up for at the overperforming area. We'll see. Um, I think they're a little less likely to take a hit than Wormwood at the moment. Uh, but there's been a lot of talk about them being a little too good for their points. So maybe they'll be getting a point increase. Maybe they'll have a rules change. Maybe nothing. Um, as far as the bottom five, uh, you know, the underperforming models, I don't know yet that it's early enough for Circle to really see anything. If they did, I would be looking at the Wolds, the Satyrs, um, Probably not Brynos, but the, the non-character ones. Uh, as far as Warlocks, uh, Mosar, and probably just Mosar. Uh, I think a lot of people are kind of down on Bradigus, but I think that has more to do with Wolds and less to do with Bradigus himself. Um, it'd be nice to see a few other small things change too, but uh, I, don't, I don't know that we should expect to see a lot that affects Circle specifically in the positive direction from the bottom just yet um obviously i'd be really happy if the storm raptor just magically became mat six uh but 
we'll see. It's just due out. I think it's premature to say that the Mat 5 is so bad. We'll talk more about it when it comes out and I get a chance to play it. And we've seen Una too. So I think those are going to be pretty big there. Uh, if some other things come down, that could benefit us as well. Sloan is Sloan and Kane 2 are kind of problems for us. Rusk 2 is just infuriating to play against. Uh, the Hellmouth and Legion could certainly use a... Uh, some some change to it it's it's six points and it's the hardest thing to kill that i can think of for those points um by a long margin um and then there may be a few other things but th those are the big ones that come to mind i i would expect magic to uh possibly high reclaimer getting some changes the rusk too would be great if we saw some changes um, I think there's a few solos that might be a little under cost that I could see them being adjusted as well. So that's about it there. So let's talk a little bit about a couple models real quick. So up first, the iconic Shifting Stones. Uh, if you played in Mark II, these will be or Mark I, Mark anything. <clears throat> These will be pretty familiar to you. So uh, Shifting Stones are now three points, uh, which is sort of down. They used to be two points in Mark II, so that would have translated to four, so they're down to three points. They are still immobile, which is basically the same as it was in Mark II. They are defense five against shooting. They're automatically hit in melee. They are armor 18 with five wounds. They, and they can't be pushed, slammed, etc., etc., they retain most of what they do. They went up to Command 5, uh, which is nice. Uh, that extra inch you gets a lot of things inside of the triangle that wouldn't have previously. Uh, otherwise, the they they kept Serenity, so if, if there's a, war, a friendly war beast within an inch, you can remove one Fury from it. Um, each stone can pull one Fury off each, basically. Healing field is the same, so any model in the unit or within two inches of one of the stones is healed a D3. So that actually used to be within one inch, it's gone up to two. It's a nice change, it makes it a little easier to apply, makes gives them a makes that healing more of a role for them than it sort of previously was, uh, which is great. Uh, teleportation and shifting, it may not be the exact ability, I didn't pull their card out, are both changed but the if you you'd have to read it closely so both of those rules used to say the place effect that you perform is within uh, so with shifting you would place a stone in the unit within eight inches of itself now you have to place it completely within eight inches of itself so that's gonna you're gonna lose about an inch on a shifting stone placement for teleportation you the the model still has to be within the triangle, so there's it, you, sliver of base is across the line of a triangle. You're in, you can be placed, but now you have to place that model completely within eight inches. Um, so if you played Mark II, these were in every list. You usually had two in every list. You usually had the attachment with them. Uh, I don't have the info for him, but we'll go over him real quick. He uh, went from Command 8 to Command 7. He now grants Prowl rather than Stealth. He still has Rockhammer, exactly the same. Um, and he has uh, his stone armor ability is, I think, called Stone Shield now. And it's just plus four armor. He doesn't lose defense before he was basically turned into a Shifting Stone. Uh, he still has five wounds. And I, he's a 13-13 to match the other... Uh, I think he's a 13-13 to match the other Black Lad chassis. Um... In Mark II, you would have brought as many of the attachments as you can. He, he used to go up to Command 8 rather than 7, and he used to give them Stealth rather than Prowl. Uh, Prowl is not nearly as good, and it's even harder to trigger now than it ever was. So I, I don't find myself really feeling like... And he's two points, uh, which is essentially unchanged point size. Uh, I don't really feel myself needing to bring the attachment with the Shifting Stones too often. If I was, I would bring it with... Uh, probably Morvana 2 because Fog of War means that their the Shifting Stone units do again have stealth which makes them pretty frustrating and and the field allowance on this on the Stonekeeper is now FA2 
So if you bring two units of stones with her, you could bring two uh, stone keepers, which obviously has its benefits. Um, as I, the, the ones I just mentioned. So uh, Command 7 is nice. You can still get a bigger, much bigger triangle, get your stones out there to do fury management or healing better. But uh, Command 5 is actually pretty big. Like that extra inch of command is noticeable in my games. And uh, yeah. So um, the other thing is with the being completely within 8 inches, you used to essentially, with a large base model, pardon me, you would get an additional minimum of an additional inch of threat range out of them so if you're completely within eight you're about within ten and all the heavies charge nine that we have uh, essentially so without without any other adjustment that is so you could and and things like get our export wolf stalkers that have two inch melee range you would get basically 12 inches of threat out of the stones without having to go in a straight line which is nice and then you could still get some out of activation movements if you need to telekinesis war path and so on and um but now with it completely with an eight you're actually sort of behind an inch um so your reasons for using them are a little bit different than they used to be uh obviously it's still nice to be able to go over top of things so you know we if you get jammed up and you need to get behind their lines or around something or things like that, it's still great. My placement effects are strong for that reason. Um, there are things like admonition that you won't trigger, so that's good. Uh, you can do it after you activate it. So if you um, say if you sprint, you maybe you charged out, sprinted back, and then you can place even farther back if that's important. Um, they're super important with a caster like Wormwood. He has one way to move about the table, and that is Cassius and Dark Path, and that costs two Fury every time you need to use it. So, having Shifting Stones to be able to place them is pretty strong. Uh, but the other, and the other side is that there's still Fury management. So, if you have a caster that's going to bring, <clears throat> I'd say more than three beasts. Um, well, depends. If you're at three plus, you probably can consider starting to put shifting stones. I don't think you absolutely have to, but it's another definitely strong reason to look into them. Uh, and the healing is really strong too. If you've got a warlock like uh, Balder Two who wants to brick up, or even like Skinwalkers who heal D three and then they heal a D three on top of it, you may go from nearly dead to a completely fully healed unit of Skinwalkers, and and then you got to deal with what a pain they are going to be. Um, so they're, they're still strong, but they're not for every list like they used to be. I don't play them with Tanith. I haven't played them with Balder. Uh, I played them a little bit with Balder 1, but only in builds with Woldrath. Um, I haven't played them with just a, a significant number of, of casters, actually. Uh, I don't think I played them with Kai 2 when I played her. Uh, my Grail list doesn't have them. I would consider them there, but it doesn't have them. I, I did, but things with wolds are definitely a great place. Um, wold guardians are speed seven, so they actually do still get a threat range increase of, of an inch by being placed. Um, <clears throat> and they're they're going to be strong for healing those wolds too, which your warlock can't repair unless his name is uh, unless he starts with a B, basically uh, Balder Bragius. So. Uh, Shifting stones are still there, still part of our army. Something to consider, but y you don't need them in every list. Um, think about what their purpose is before you're just dropping them in. And, uh, yeah, so that's about it on shifting stones. Uh, we're going to do just one more entry for today, I think, and then um, I'll work on getting pr the next episode a little bit less uh, technically inept. And we'll talk about Chromac 2. Uh, so Chromac 2 was probably my favorite Warlock at the end of Mark 2. I have not played him as much as I'd like. I, I plan to put him on the table more uh, in the coming weeks, or uh, at the very least after War Machine Weekend. I, when I'm not playing Una, maybe I'll try to squeeze in some Chromac 2 games. Um, 
he's been not changed that much, but still sort of a lot, depending on how you look at it. Um, it's only a few rules changes, but the impact is pretty big. So he's still speed six. Uh, Matt eight, rat, who cares? Defense 14, armor 18. Uh, his command no longer really matters, and thus I don't remember what it is. He still has Wrathrock, which uh, goes up to POW 17, uh, so I believe he's still strength 10. Uh, two inch melee on that. He has 19 wounds, and he has Fury 7. Uh, his feet is unchanged, still plus 2 strength and armor. Uh, sorry, his feet is changed. Apologies. Uh, still plus 2 strength and armor for friendly faction war living war beasts, or living models in his battle group. Uh, but now instead of the auto hit in melee claws, he just automatically casts Carnage. Uh, I think this is a good change for the feet. It's uh, if you really needed that auto hitting part of his feet, you probably also needed Carnage because you were playing him beast heavy uh, for the subsequent attacks after that. So, so having uh, having that cast for free on his feet, I think is extremely good. Um, his spell list changed, so the the spell we were abusing the most at the end of Mark II with him was Primal Howl. Uh, he has lost that spell. He also lost Aggravator, but he effectively gained it back as his Field Marshal is now hyper-aggressive. So he doesn't get that, but his every model in his battle group does. So very strong to just have that on. Having that on all the time is a lot better than having to cast it. Because you, you before you might be like, well, I don't know that I really want to move forward or this or that, but now you might find that you might find that one or two off weird instances where you you want to make that move directly toward them that you wouldn't have before, and you're not spending fury on doing so. So, uh, and it can't be purified, etc., etc. So, that's a good change. His spell list. Uh, so that's two spells that used to be in a spell list that aren't anymore. He still has carnage, although now it costs two instead of three. Great change. Anytime we don't spend as much fury we're pretty happy about that um he gained a spell called vengeful which is an upkeep just gives retaliatory strike to uh friendly faction model i believe i don't think it has to be in his battle group uh can be neat uh I, the two models that abuse it the most are the bold wrath because he has knockdown fists uh, although he doesn't synergize a whole lot with the rest of uh chromax kit other than primal shock uh, he doesn't use his, he doesn't get advantage of his feet basically is the the big downer um but the knockdown fist can be pretty big you come in on the world wrath he punches you you fall down you don't do anything so that probably isn't how you were hoping to deal with a high hit box uh model the storm raptor has disruption on his beak so send the warjack in you punch the warjack with your mouth and then it loses all its fury so probably can't kill the storm raptor so we like that um it's also just fine on things like Gedericks who hit you really hard and knock out a column or something You're gonna be pretty sad about that um and so on any of our beasts that hit pretty hard we don't have a ton of other effects that i can think of at least not presently but something to keep in mind uh it's just another deterrent for coming in uh and trying to stop stuff uh, and it stacks nicely with if you have getterix with uh, spiny growth so now you hit him you take a d3 from spiny growth you take another pow 19 from his axe or more if he had just feed it or was prime uh, he wouldn't have spiny and primal so yeah uh, yeah up to pow 21 on the feet you might end up knocking out a column or something which means getterix lives um or chromac if, if spiny's on chromac himself and he is vengeful but i probably a bad in bad position if you do that <clears throat> uh so yeah carnage vengeful he steals primal shock uh i didn't get a lot of use out of this when i played it before but every once in a while if you needed to chip a little damage in from a long ways it was really good uh, i think with uh scarsfell griffins having long leash and being faster now that sending them off to get close to a really important solo that you need to kill can be pretty strong um they're only strength 8, I think, but a boost of POW 8 is often going to be enough to kill a important solo. Um, at the very least, give you a chance at it that you wouldn't normally have. Or um, with some of the bigger beasts, you can just, uh, like I said, you, you may get to boost something or kill something that's in the way. If 
you have the World Wrath, that's a power 16. That's nothing to sneeze at. So, uh, it's it's a niche spell. It's it's a good, it's a decent enough nuke. Um, and I'm forgetting a spell. Probably an important one, too. You have Vengeful, Carnage, Primal Shock. Why am I forgetting a spell? This is terrible. It's great radio. Um, Primal Shock. Carnage. Vengeful. Oh, Awakened Spirit. Important spell. Uh, Faction Warbeast can cast its Animus for free. Uh, we have a bunch of those that are really good. The Storm Raptor loves it. Uh, that Animus is really good, and getting it for free means you can use a lot more of its Fury to do what you want it to do. Uh, definitely a strong place for it. Yeah. Um, Geterix likes to be able to put up Spiny Growth and go through his stack of Fury to, to do some work. I don't think it's as good anymore on something like a Stalker, where... Uh, lightning Strike only costs one now. Uh, you may still do it because it's it's important. It may be important to get that have that extra attack available, but uh, probably a little less than before. I, if you had a Feral or a Pure Blood, I might use it for either of their Animi so that you aren't feeling like you can't use them and cast it. Uh, probably not on a Gorax though. It's mostly just there to spit out Primal as it is. I don't think it needs to do it for free, um, but you could. Uh, really any of our two cost anime is going to be really strong for and then any of our one cost it's going to be situational so it, it's basically Chromax one fury or the druid wilder for you not spending one fury so it's, it's decent but that, that part's probably not good enough on its own but the spiny growth really good and um, a few of the others are, are nice uh, and then the gargantuan anime uh, the only other changes are Heart Eater now only lets you boost or buy melee attacks. So that's a, a little bit of a downer. Uh, it was nice to use the corpses to boost Primal Shocks from here and there. Mostly it's n not a big deal. And the thing we gained back is Chromac now has Grievous, wo um, Grievous Wounds on Wrathrock all the time. So Grievous Wounds is a really good ability in Mark three stops repairs on jack stops healing on everything turns off tough turns off anno other annoying abilities uh so really like grievous wounds on it and it makes sense it had grievous wounds on all the other casters that had it so uh and the only other change is and he used to just have uh i forget the name of the ability but if uh, i think it was life drinker if you kill a guy you heal a d3 now he has to spend a corpse token so if now it's a choice do you want to spend those corpses to heal or do you want to spend them to buy attacks so uh, he's still a very aggressive warlock. I think he really wants to... See, he, he can be built a lot of different ways. I think you could find ways to play him with any of your heavies. I'm going to try some builds with Geterix and some Stalkers uh, soon. I think you build him with a lot of lights. Honestly, either Wild Ar any of the... Ar well, mostly Wild Arguses, uh, Scarsville Griffins. I think you could make a case for Razor Wings, especially if any infantry picks up. Or, or even rotter horns uh rip horn satyrs seem like they have a lot of game with him uh starting at 12 19 they take great advantage of carnage you don't mind primaling them at 14 points they're um and they're gonna hit really hard they take advantage of all of his rules uh, a gnarl horn or a shadow horn are also pretty solid additions shadow horns throws are strong and he can get into a lot of weird places uh, the Gnarl Horn would be more to make sure you're bringing uh, the uh, the Earth's Blessing Animus, which can be no knockdown, no stationary on, on a caster. is tough to deal with this Chromac. It's pretty big, uh, although you have to pick between that and Spiny, uh, spiny Growth if you have Geterix. Uh, he also has a bond with Geterix now, uh, him and Chromac 1, of course, that gives him over that gives Geterix Overtake. Uh, so every once in a while they may think they're safe and you can run up and bite a irrelevant trooper advance an inch and get something important that they didn't think he could get to uh, or he could just munch his way through six infantry models if you need to um, and if you need snacks it could be important sometimes you need snacks um so yeah chromic 2 pretty pretty much so good uh, he was played a decent amount of wtc he ended up with a better win record than the um a lot of other things uh, he wasn't played a ton compared to, say, Wormwood and some of the other 
most uh, highly played stuff, but uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to, to see what he can do. I don't I don't know if he really wants to see the toughest of gun lines, but I think he he at least has some game into almost anything. And one of the reasons being, and this was true in Mark II, that you have an extra heavy in your army with Chromac. Pow 17, Pow 19 on his feet, armor 14, or sorry, defense 14, armor 18, and 19 wounds. He's like the he's he's beefier than most of our war beasts as far as stats his hitboxes are only a little bit below he can heal himself he can kill infantry at med 8 he can kill warjacks at pow 17 he can get up to 10 attacks in a turn if he needs uh wait sorry 11 attacks in a turn if he needs to uh he's and he's just fun like who doesn't love this big angry tharn coming down the table with his giant axe he beat up a troll for so uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and uh i'm gonna go ahead and cut it there just because it's getting a little bit late like i said i may try over one of the days over friday saturday or sunday if i have some free time we'll we'll give it another go um definitely thanks for listening uh real quick mention my only sponsor at the moment griffin's Juice painting there uh where did, there we go there's the logo uh, all the models I keep showing are models that have been painted by Griffin's Juice Painting. They look amazing. I'm really excited every time I get a new one. And if you want to get some stuff painted, uh, contact them either on Facebook at Griffin's Juice Painting or GriffinsJuicePainting.com. There's also some hobby tutorials and some pretty pictures. And uh, yeah, pretty nice. So uh, this will go up on YouTube soon. And. Uh, Next time we'll talk about some more circle. Thanks for listening.